Good morning and welcome to the Muscatine County Board of Supervisors meeting. Today is Monday, November 15th, 2021 and 9 a.m. And the first item on the agenda is to review the agenda. Move to approve. A motion by Scott. Second. Seconded by Doug. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 I vote aye. Any opposed? All right, four zero. Moving on to item number three, discussion and possible action to approve the claims dated November 15, 2021 in the amount of $869,262.19. Move to approve. Motion by Scott. Second. Seconded by Nathan. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by aye. Aye. I vote aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> All right, moving on to item number four. This is a public hearing on the request to vacate and close the section on 41st Street in the Fruitland Township. And this is uh, open for the public to speak on. If there's anybody in the public that like to speak on it. Is this the appropriate way to yes. address the, the council? Um, my name is John Cool, and I'm an attorney representing Grain Processing Corporation. And I just want to let you folks know that we would appreciate uh, moving forward with this project. We've been in contact with the county for over a year at this point and appreciate their support on this project. This uh, vacation will help us to control access to some property that we purchased last year. And um, we uh, appreciate the opportunity to gain that uh, control so that it, it's not open. Um, and uh, used by folks who shouldn't be on our property any longer. So if you have any questions at all, I'll do my best to answer them. But uh, again, I just want to be here in person to thank you for your support of this project. Thank I'm you. sure the railroad would be happy to have it closed as well. I believe they will, yes. I do have a question for Keith. Is that beyond the last house down to the railroad on 41st? Yeah, I'm not aware there. of any houses down there. No houses on that road. On 41st Street, there's none. Uh, not that not I'm aware of. Okay. That's just that we also call it Maple Grove Road. A couple of years. It's just that dead end going back to the levee. Yeah. I thought there was. I some. thought it was the other. See, that's why I went to that map. But okay. So wasn't there some houses right up on the levee? Cottages. Yeah, yes. those are all gone. So those are gone. Just once upon a time. Yeah. Like three or four years ago, I mm -hmm. thought there were still some there. Right. They were they were removed and no longer exist as of uh, September of last year. Ah. Uh, so okay. it's a different okay. section than I thought. No, I know exactly what he's talking about. I just didn't know exactly. I, I, I brought the map. Sorry. That's been a garbage Very dump for, us this morning. for a long time. Yeah. So then that. That's what I was wondering if what needed to be cleaned up. Thank you. And John, how do you spell your last name? Last name is K. Yeah. Michelle. Thank you. Everybody that had property got received this exhibit. And and you're looking at at closing that from. Pettibone down? No, the plate, what's cross hatched on there? What's, okay, what's cross hatched? So then you still go so down. We've still got Petty a dead bone. end, but it doesn't go all the way back. Part, maybe part, part of the discussion over a period of time is we really wanted to go to Pettibone, but we couldn't make that happen. I see. That simple. Okay. So why couldn't we? Some property owners <laughs> didn't want that to happen. Uh, I'm okay. And so then these houses along the, the levee, are those, gone. those cottages are gone now. It's an old kitchen. Okay. Why? People would, would yeah. refer to that as Dog Pound Road. Mm -hmm. that, that, might help, that might help some people realize what it is. I had went down there a few years back, I think, when we first started talking about work on the levee, and I remember seeing those homes, and I thought, well, that's going to be a challenge if we start raising the levee and doing the work, and how are you going to do that on both sides? Um, 
that might have been four or five years back when yeah. I first those, and, and those were just cottages. I, I don't believe any of them were year-round residents. Were they or were they? No, oh. I, didn't, I didn't believe so, no. Go ahead, Nathan. Are you saying, yeah, they, they, they've been removed, and um, I, I don't think they were uh, year-round residents. The, uh, the, the land has been, I believe, acquired, and those cottages uh, paid it out. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Well, is there any other discussion in regards to the vacation of 41st Street in McCrutland Township from the public? Okay. Move to close the public hearing. All right, hearing none, we have a motion by Nathan to close the public hearing. Second. A second. All right, this is a roll call vote to close the public hearing. Nathan? Aye. Doug? Aye. Scott? Aye. And I vote aye. All right. Moving on to item number 4B. Uh, this is a discussion of possible action to approve the resolution 11-15-21-01 to vacate and close the section of the secondary road, section 15 and 22 T76NRTW of the 5th Principal Meridian of Muscatine County. And this is a roll call vote. I just have a question before before there's a vote. Okay. Scott, um, go ahead. Uh, would there be uh, what is going to be the procedure in regard to um, uh, blocking that road from other? Is it going to be gated or or gated? That's my understanding and our expectation. Yes. Okay. I can't tell you how soon we get to that. I understand. I, I didn't know if it was going to be gated and still allow the access no. to the landowners. Uh, oh. Well, which we, is GPC. We, we are the Can you land landowners. Okay. So. Yeah. 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 I don't have a problem with that at all. All right. So this is a roll call vote then to approve the, the resolution. Need a motion. So. I move to approve. Okay, we have a motion by Doug. <clears throat> Second by Scott. This is a roll call vote. How do you vote, Nathan? I vote aye. All right, Doug. Aye. Scott. Aye. And I vote aye. This is a uh, okay resolution approved four zero. All right, moving on to item number five. This is a public hearing on the request to close the section on Keokuk Avenue in the Lake Township. This is now an opening for the public to be able to speak on the vacation in the closed section on the Keokuk Avenue. So if there's anybody here from the public that would like to speak on this vacating of Keokuk Avenue, now is your opportunity to be able to speak. So what we have is a map of where we're going to be vacating on Keokuk Avenue. I'll, I'll just go with, with the map reflects the hashed area is, is where the actual uh, closures are, the temporary closures are right now. Okay. Um, that doesn't mean that we... That's the area we think should be vacated. Uh, that doesn't mean that we would necessarily sign it that way or leave the gates. And that we might move it closer to that drainage area. To like half that road will become Mr. Miller's on the other side. Uh, gates could probably remain there if, if he if he wanted that, and then it essentially would be his gate or. They can come out and we can put something down there at the creek. That means people will be able to traverse that area. So. Okay. Uh, I, have, I have two questions. <clears throat> the first question I have is on the west side on that Hurlbut property, um, does, does there need to be some access on that Hurlbut piece? Um, 
it's hard to tell from the map here if there's an access. That, that is beyond that access point. The, the closure is to the north of that access point. The, the, this okay. is reflecting okay. what's actually there right now. So okay. there is access to so that. So there part. is access to that to that parcel. Yes, sir. Okay. That was question one. Question two. Um, on Mr. Miller's piece, um, I know we talked prior, and that whole that looks like a forty there um, is all in CRP. Is that right, John? Yes. And you have access to that forty. I don't know what you're talking about, Scott. Oh, I'm is sorry. Put it to the south. Yeah, he's talking put it to the south. Yeah. The, the just, just, just north of, of, of the said uh, drainage, um, where the problem is, is what I'm talking about. Right, right now, he would go through the gate and utilize the the road to yeah. get down there to access that. Okay. Most of that forty to the south. I, okay. I have to go clear to the to the creek where the ditch is. To yeah. The field. So that's where I was saying that the gates could remain and become. His, if it's uh, it's really what him and the property owner on the other side might agree, or they could come out and an actual closure go clear down there to the south. But this piece would be vacated, but then you know, people can drive in there. Whereas, example, on the 41st one, if they put gates up, you know, that's going to be their choice, but, you know, that keeps people out of there. Yeah. Well, and, and we all know what happens to sections of uh, lanes or roads and so on and so forth um, with individuals wanting to go down there and mud run and so on and so forth. Uh, garbage. That garbage and everything else. And, and that, that, that creates a, a problem um, as well. You know, the, the, the best solution, I would think, would be to gate it as far to the north as you can and, well, and be able to access well, it my, through the gate. My solution, John. and it, it would be in accordance with the wishes of the landowner. Correct. Would be to leave the gates where they're at, and they become theirs, and we'll put our actual closure signs more up there by the the uh, creek or the crossing there. Yeah. So that'll be the hard, the hard closure. And so like for uh, Mr. Holiday on the south, he can open up the gates if he feels he needs more of a run to get up the hill uh -huh. and uh, or keep them closed again to keep people from going down there right but right. that would be what I propose but we would certainly work with what they desire yeah <laughs> so Mr. Holiday do you understand what we're looking at and where we're talking about do you have a moment do you want to mention anything more yeah, or that's Mr. Miller. John Miller. Mr. Miller. Oh, I thought that was Mr. Holiday. Me too. <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Holiday. Here. Okay. I, my apologies. Um, I was just wondering about your uh, taxes being different. I, I'm sorry, could, could you ask the gentleman to come to the podium? Yeah, can you, you could, yeah. Then Nathan can hear you. I appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. No, that's good. Thank you, Nathan. Will, will the taxes on the place be any different? Will they change the property taxes? They should. They should. Yeah, they probably will. I don't know how much it will change. I, the golf, I, I, I could answer that, yes. So currently road right away, you have a 40 and you have a road on one side, you know, an acre comes off, so you're paying taxes on 39 even though you own 40. So uh, he's going to get another act, acre taxed at whatever this is taxed down there, which is probably extremely minimal. And these, these points are at the section line or quarter section of the map. But yeah, so there will be taxes on another acre. Okay. Well, same, same, same way on 41st GPC, they're going to, when that becomes theirs. vacated of theirs, they're going to, I don't think the land values are very high there, but they're going to pick up a few dollars in taxes. Will the taxes go the other way, where I'm paying taxes for a maintained road, and now I don't have one? I might have gained an acre, but is that going to 
what's going to happen there? So the taxes that you're paying are paying for maintenance, you're paying for road. I mean, in a sense, when you pay your property taxes, your taxes are also for what we pay for to maintain, to get to those, to get to your farm, the roads, to get beyond like Salisbury and all everything back in through there. So I don't know if that'll drop anything in my opinion, but I'd have to double check on some of those things. Go ahead. If I might, I, I can't tell you exactly, but the secondary road fund gets about $2 per thousand. I doubt this is extra acres we've been buying going to be that kind of a tax value, but if it is, it's going to be worth $5,000, then it, you know, we're going to get $10. And what I often tell some people, and I'm not trying to be rude here, but we'll spend $10 and we'll stop. I mean, if, if that's what you want. Uh, typically, property taxes do not even begin to pay for the cost of road maintenance. And uh, the, the board does give local option sales tax to that. And we get a lot from the <coughs> gas tax fund. So uh, that's the situation. Uh, that road without travel on it, if, if they choose to leave it there, you know, it's, it's going to stand up pretty good, hopefully. Okay. So after uh, vacating this, this, it's over with. Now if the ditches need cleaned out or anything, that's up to me to clean them out. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is your property now. When we vacate it, we no longer own it. Okay. Well, I guess to the west of me, that's the uh, Nature Conservancy now. I don't know if they need access to be there or down that road or not. I don't know. Did they get a letter to... I don't know. We should all the neighbors should have gotten something, correct? Yes. And in, in the in the way that that's set up, they should have been mailed everything. I don't know if it's certified letters that we mail, but but they should have all been notified prior to this notice for the public hearing. Okay. And uh, then where we put the gates at is going to be. We can discuss that later. That's better. that's what I'd like for you to be able to discuss with Keith. Yeah. To look at it and say, hey, you know what? If this could be a hundred feet this way or fifty feet that way, or I think that's something that we want to try to make sure that we're communicating with you and then you're able to kind of have some input knowing that this property is now going to come back to you um, that you'd be able to actually have that discussion okay i was concerned about uh with the campground being down there there's i road close or not they head down go south on that and they're they're going to be in trouble i mean they got to get turned around somehow yeah you know so i i guess uh Will it, will it be cabled off, gated off right at Salisbury? Or that, you have to be able to so, pull a piece of equipment in there off of Salisbury to open a gate. You know, you're going to have to give some room. Right now, the plan is it stays right towards that. Yeah. Okay. Let's just, and they'll just leave the road closed signs up there as those barricades. Leave them. No, leave. those will probably go away. Some other signage will go up. Okay. No, uh, no private outlet. property or no trespassing or. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. And again, reach out to Keith if there's anything that you need for communications or. I don't know how much we can help in on signage, but I think it, you know ultimately we don't want the public go, to go down there now that it's going to be a, you know, vacated road. So. There's signage or things that we can help on that we can. I don't know if what we can or what we can't pay for, but I think that's something that at the end of the day, we don't want the public to go down <coughs> that road and hopefully be able to protect your property. Okay. Um, this is, uh, any more on the public on this? Uh, how soon will it be closed? How soon? Yeah, will it be tomorrow or? Uh, well, now that we actually have the, the hearing, I think that'll be something that Keith will have to probably schedule with his crews. Well, if it's not changing, it will look just like it looks today. But beyond those gates will be, half that will be your property. Okay. After today. If, if they, if they pass the resolution, yes. I see. 
All right. Uh, so hearing none, no more on the public hearing, we have a motion to close by Nathan. Second. Second by Scott. This is a roll call vote. Nathan, how do you vote? Aye. Doug? Aye. Scott? Aye. And I vote aye. Okay, so public hearing is now closed. Moving on to the next item, which is a discussion and possible action to approve the resolution numbered 11 15 21 02 to vacate and close the section on the secondary roads in the sections 11 and 12 T77 and R3W of the 5th Principal Meridian in the Muscatine County. So moved. We have a motion by Scott. Second. Second by Doug. This is a roll call vote to approve the resolution. Doug? Aye. Scott? Aye. I vote aye. And Nathan? Aye. All right. Okay, so road closed. All right. Moving on to the next items now. This is item number six, and this is items with the county engineer, Keith White. First item is uh, the discussion and possible action to approve the various utility permits. Good morning. We have two utility permits today. The first is from Muscatine Power and Water of Muscatine, Iowa. And they are requesting to dig a bore pit and set a vault at the back of the right of way on the Pettibone near 2579 Pettibone. And the second is from Mid-American Energy Company of Davenport, Iowa. And they were requesting to replace a three-pole transmission line structure on Vail Avenue, uh, we're about a mile and a half south of 120th Street. And we just noted there's quite a few guy wire anchors involved, but the proposed design meets clear zone requirements, which there's just rules on the slope of the shoulders and you run off the road how far you go before you hit something. So uh, recommend approval of both of those. Uh, approval. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Keith, on, on that 2579 Pettibone one, they're putting a vault down in there. Is that an actual vault for the electrical connections inside so it's like a sealed containment? It's a 17-inch by 30-inch communications vault. Okay, so that's a small one. Right. It, it, it's small, but you know, their bore pits, the bigger things. So, uh, My concern was... It's tight in there, and they, yeah. they got to get under the railroad, too. So. Yeah, I thought when they meant like a vault, some of those are like full-size ones that I was concerned about flooding. Yeah. No. And, and lifting and floating those things out, so I wasn't sure how that was supported down. Okay. Yeah, I almost, uh, this is what they uh, called it, I believe. We probably would have called it a handhold. Yeah. So. Yeah, wouldn't it? They did call it a hole. Okay, that's what, that's what concerned me. All right, so I appreciate that, Keith. All right, so we have a motion by Scott. Second. Second by Doug. <laughs> Any discussion? Further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All right. Four zero. My sorry. Apologies, Nathan. Okay. Uh, next item is discussion and possible action to approve the purchase of the light duty trucks. Yeah, and I brought a memo and I apologize. Uh, th this is under a really fast time constraint. I apologize to Nathan that I don't have this in front of him. Okay. Um, but we will tell you what it says on here, yep. Nathan. <laughs> Thank you. I'm still passing them out. All right. So these are quotes from Krieger's, Nathan. And uh, what, what we're up against. Uh, Nathan and and so it's there's I, I've kind of intended a little discussion beyond uh, just this but in our current supply chain world and and 
a week or two ago and told you, you know, some of the constraints we were up against. And right now we're working on a number of items, which I'll speak to in just a minute. But these things come up uh, on a moment's notice, the opportunity to purchase a pickup that meets our specs. And historically, uh, even though we are budgeted and approved for these, we came to you with them. Uh, but there's going to be situations here that if we don't, if we don't make the decision, it's not going to happen. We've already passed on one from Kriegers because we, because I couldn't get here and talk to you and couldn't meet the deadline. Um, so, uh, hoping for at least the immediate future that and I was going to pass out our capital expenditures that you give us the uh, uh, ability to uh, make the decisions on these things if they're within our, our, you know, if they're budgeted and planned for. So anyway, on the paper, Nathan, uh, they're able to quote us a 2022 GMC uh, 1500. Um, and I've just listed the uh, Quoted price of thirty-seven nine eighty-five. Mm -hmm. They are also able to quote us a twenty twenty-two Ford Super Duty, a, a two fifty four-wheel drive, and that at thirty-three one eighty-nine. Uh, we actually had them uh, look at five different trades, uh, but I've noted on here. Well, or maybe I didn't note on here, but we would probably like to make. The trade decisions at the time of delivery. I think the 250 is pretty clear uh, what we'll probably do there. Right now there's a truck that uh, goes with one excavator that has a fuel tank in it and uh, this would be to replace that one. believe it was 23,000 that they were offering us possibly for trade on that. Um, no, that's the wrong one. I'm sorry. Twenty-two five. Uh, that's a red extended cab with uh, 86,000 miles. That, that's probably clearly the one we would trade there. In the case of the other one, there's a lot of other possibilities. We have a 2001 uh, vehicle that we will uh, probably trade off. It's need, needs to be gone. And uh, they've offered us a very fair number for that. Uh, so Keith, in, in your numbers that you have here, um, of your 2022s on both of them, yes. That is the retail price that they're giving us, or, or that is that is to that is what we would pay if we paid cash. Is that correct? That, my, that, my that's list? that's correct. The, so if if hypothetically we trade the one, in, the one spells it out like uh, I've got it spelled out better on the Ford here. So let me just speak to that one. Okay. The Ford has a. 47,320 list. Uh, Krieger's sale price is 42.3, but they're getting, they're showing a $9,161 fleet rebate, which we almost always get. So you're all the way down from 47.3 to 33.139 would be our cash price on that. But odds are. We will trade say, that one that they've given us twenty two five hundred for for a net of ten six thirty nine. But I didn't list all that out because okay. there's just too many moving pieces right now. So the number the number that's shown here is what it would be if we paid full price, not minus the the trade ins. Correct. That's the county's price. Right. Okay, that's I, fine. But what I'm and I, I really want to make clear because. I, I've, I've lived this one before where uh, it wasn't, but Nancy says, well, I want to buy one for that price. Well, she can't. It's a government fleet discount going on there. 
because she's going, wow, I've never seen a price like that. It's so good. Um, yeah. So, you know, normally most things we buy, we buy at a better price than the public can, can get because the dealer gets a fleet rebate from the manufacturer. Same on Caterpillar equipment. Okay. Do we get that from both both vendors, from GMC and Ford? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm going to tell you over a 35-year span, that's not always the case, mm -hmm. but it's generally the case. There, there are times when one manufacturer decides we're just going, you know, Ford, we're just going to beat General Motors, period. And, or, or Dodge says, or Dodge says we're going to beat everybody, or they say, no, we're not even playing in that game. Okay. So, kind of depends on way above our level of, of the manufacturer's moving inventory. So, that's a really good price on a three-quarter ton Ford. It, it it's an, really is a good price. And, and like I said, this is kind of a rush deal. Uh, but this is what we're up against on, on getting these things. Uh, and I, I showed, you know, approximately January, approximately March build dates. Uh, those, of course, are not set in stone. But hopefully, so we're trying to get stuff still in this fiscal year's budget. Um, other items I'm going to bring to you in the next week or two will probably be tippy toe in the line if we can have it here in June. But if we don't act, it will become, well, we won't have it here in 2022. It'll be in yeah. 2023. So uh, that's uh, what I have for so today. I, I have no issues. I think the only request that I would like to do is once you have this request made, as far as what it is, if you could provide with what, what vehicle you traded in and how much capital did we spend out of each one. Sure. I think that would be my only, my only ask on those. And if I could, while I was on that, it's just a reminder this was our capital, our 20, fiscal 2022 capital. Thank you. Budget. So we had, uh, yeah, three light duty trucks. We had 95,000 in there for three of those, which again, if we do trades and it stays like this, we're gonna be way under on that. The two tandems, I think we're gonna be in the 130 something per. So you'd say we would probably be, I'll go high, 135, 270. You see we're over there, but we'll probably be under on those. Uh, snow equipment. We're probably, <laughs> we can get snow equipment before we can get the trucks. Motor grader, ooh, with trade. It's probably gonna be more than 220. Stuff is just, steel has gone up. Uh, and we're also, uh, have been talking about a new mower tractor. Uh, I think our newest one is a 2000. And it's going to stay in service, but uh, time to get a new one. And that's the same thing there. Uh, we're talking to Tiger, and we're going to talk to Diamond about factory packages, uh, and more than likely a deer, uh, like our last one, in which the local dealer can service that. Uh, but we will have to act real fast to see one by spring. And it's just sooner or later, I think. I know they make some different things in the Quad Cities, but I would think Deer Strike would start playing into availability too. But the manufacturer already has, the more manufacturer already has tractors, slots promised to them. So that's just kind of an update on equipment purchasing. We are working on all those things. Okay. I have a question, Keith, and you might not be able to answer this, but it just struck me. Do you buy your, your tractors and boom mowers as kind of a package, do you, or with the same manufacturers, or do you do you split that? Do you... I, I, I've, I've done it both ways, and, you know, what I've been telling staff for, for educational purposes, I, I've found it uh, 
my opinion, to be better to buy it as the package from the manufacturer. What you usually find um, is the more manufacturer has some specific requirements for their tractor. It's usually upscale items on the tractor. Uh, one that it wasn't here once, and, and there was a reason beyond the beyond the engineer why it was bought separately. But uh, and it was a well, I, I won't even pick on the brand, but it came did not have the size of clutch in it that the Mora manufacturer specified. So that just led to headache after headache. Yeah. So uh, it's very common in the counties to buy the package, and that's what we're working on, yeah. is getting a package that. for it. Matter of fact, the Tiger salesman will be back soon to talk to us. We've talked to him once already. Thank you. All right, so this is now um, meeting a Motion to approve this request for the light duty trucks. Move to approve. So motion by Doug. Second by Scott. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, four zero. And again, just once you have those purchases or requests already funded, then just share with us what how we broke that down in the capital requests. All right, moving on to projects update. Uh, not mm -hmm. a lot to report other than the bridge northeast of Nichols on Douglas. Uh, the bridge itself is mostly complete, and the uh, dirt work contractor is supposed to move in tomorrow. Uh, if the weather stays okay, then hopefully they can get the dirt work done this week. But I think. It's looking fairly good for completion of that project. And I think um, F-58, the patching, the, the Scott County patching project that we've been overseeing, but handed it back to them. Uh, Alex had just said it's, uh, Alex literally said it looked like they brought in a new crew that was way more qualified than the previous crew. And that that's, Pretty close to complete now and again the uh, York Avenue bridge up just south of F58 on York is in the letting tomorrow the DOT letting okay any questions or comments all right anything other uh, I don't think so at the moment Okay. Well, thank you again for quickly getting us those maps, too. I appreciate that. That helped us identify what those were and where they were at. So, thank you. All right, moving on to item number seven. And this is items with the Muscatine County Auditor, Tybee Vander Linden. And item number eight is the 2021 City Elections, Post Elections, Audits, and Certified Auditor Certification. Good morning. Good morning. I'm here to report that the post-election audit for the 2021 city school election was completed on Monday, November 8th. The Secretary of State um, requested an audit of all counties. Our audit was for Ward 4, Precinct 7 and 8. We had a three-person board and we had one observer attend as well as two staff members of the auditor's office, one being myself. The hand count confirmed that all the ballots were counted at the polls correctly, and for all candidates, write-ins, overvotes, and undervotes were all tabulated correctly. So the post-election audit and the election certification has been filed at, with the Secretary of State. Good. Okay, so... Hey. Item number B, the 2021 city school election amended for first tier canvas. Okay, um, I'm here to present the first tier canvas amendments from last that um, affected last week's. When I presented the first tier canvas last week, all the numbers were correct. 
um, they were certified and that canvas was presented for those numbers. But after our meeting on Monday, we received three ballots timely. Two were for um, in the mail from military, uniform military in Virginia with a spouse. And another one was uh, one provisional that the ballot ID came in by noon that day. So they, what affected was, and no candidates um, numbers were affected for the, the elections hold as they were presented, but it did affect the city of Muscatine mayor, the city of Muscatine city council at large, city council ward two, and the school, Muscatine school director at large. So I would like to read those numbers okay. as how those three ballots affected that. So for first tier city of Muscatine mayor, Chad T. Bishop received 76 votes. Brad Bark received 1,834 votes. Diana L. Broderson received 1,239 votes. James G. Edgman received 258 votes. And there was a scattering of two votes. So therefore, Brad Bark was duly nominated for the office of city of Muscatine mayor. For the city of Muscatine city council at large, Angela Lewis received 1,793 votes. Kelsey Brackett received 1,453 votes. There was a scattering of 14 votes. Therefore, Angela Lewis is to be duly nominated for the city of Muscatine City Council at large. City of Muscatine City Council Ward 2. Josiah Anderson received 143 votes. Jeff Osborne received 189 votes. Allison Glenn received 132 votes. There was a scattering of one vote for a total of 465 votes. Therefore, Jeff Osborne to be duly nominated for the Office of City of Muscatine, City Council, Ward 2. Muscatine School Director at Large, Toby McCarter received 1,797 votes. Matt Connard, 2,154 votes. Lindsay Phillips, 2,525 votes. Ken LaRue received 1,000 I'll start over. Ken LaRue received 1,907 votes, scattering of 99 votes for a total of 8,482 votes. Therefore, Matt Connard, Lindsay Phillips, and Ken LaRue to be duly nominated for the Office of Muscatine School Director at Large. The other amendment I need to bring before you is when I presented for City of Wilton last year, last Monday, City of Wilton for the city offices as well as the school board. Um, we had received no votes from S Cedar County, who reports to us since we are the control county for Wilton. Um, when I had read these, I had read that they were elected, but now I need to amend that first tier so that you sign that it was just a first tier canvas for these offices. And then today, when I present for the second tier, they will truly be nominated and elected. So I'd like to read City of Wilton offices first. City of Wilton Mayor Keith W. Stanley received 183 votes. There was a scattering of 15 votes for a total of 198 votes. City of Wilton City Council at large. Steve L. Owens received 181 votes. Michael Rohr received 68 votes. Alan W. Bill Ross received 116 votes. A scattering of six votes for a total of 371 votes. No, there were no changes in the results. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, for the second tier canvas, um, our first second tier canvas will be for Louisa Muscatine, school director at large. Jeff Riggin received 268 votes. Scott Wilson received 276 votes. Jennifer Rader received 234 votes. Christine Kirk received 116 votes, a scattering of five votes for a total of 899 votes. 
We therefore declare Jeff Regan and Scott Wilson duly elected to the office of Eliza Muscatine, school director at large for the term of four years, beginning Monday, November 15, 2021. West Liberty School Director at Large. Rebecca Vargas received 387 votes. Edward Marino received 356 votes. Emily Doffelt received 319 votes. Jamie Parizic received 289 votes for a scattering of 16 votes for a total of 1,367 votes. We therefore declare Rebecca Vargas duly elected to the office of West Liberty School Director at Large and Edward Marino, duly elected for the Office of West Liberty School Director at Large for a term of four years beginning Monday, November 15, 2021. West Liberty Public Measure QD received 470 votes for yes, and no received 247 votes for a total of 717 votes. We therefore declare West Liberty Public Measure QD to be passed. And that was for the school system. For the second tier. School district, second okay. tier. All right. City of Wilton, second tier. Keith W. Stanley received 183 votes, a scattering of 15 votes for a total of 198 votes. We therefore declare Keith W. Stanley due elected to the office of City of Wilton Mayor for the term of two years beginning Monday, January 3rd, 2022. City of Wilton City Council at Large. Steve L. Owens received 181 votes. Alan W. Bill Voss received 116 votes. Michael Rohr received 68 votes for a scattering of six votes for a total of 371 votes. We therefore declare Steve L. Owens and Alan W. Bill Voss duly elected to the office of City of Wilton City Council at Large for the term of four years beginning Monday, January 3rd, 2022. Wilton School Wilton School Director at Large, Terry Olian received 215 votes. Robert Metzger received 194 votes, scattering of eight votes for a total of 417 votes. Therefore, I declare Terry Olian and Robert Metzger duly elected to the office of Wilton City Director at Large for the term of four years beginning Wednesday, December 8, 2021. Wilton School Public Measure QE for yes, votes received 190 votes for no 48 votes for a total of 238 votes we therefore declare wilton school public measure qe to be passed the matter is final okay hopefully we'll have to say that next week okay, <laughs> okay. all right thank you very thank much thank you so much tyvee all right so moving on to item number eight and uh, this is discussion and possible action to approve the change of ownership and application for Arden Creek's Vineyard, Vineyard and Winery LLC, Arden Creek Vineyard and Winery at 239 or 2391 Independence Avenue in the Lentz, Iowa. Yeah, so the ownership previously was 75% Mike Furlong and 25% Chad. Um, the, they're now changing the ownership to 100% Chad. Oh, okay. This is chat for a long as well. Yes. I'd like to approve that now the discussion. I, uh, go ahead. I was going to second it. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I, I think we had some emails that the sheriff had sent through just in regular acknowledgement and their support as well too, uh, identifying that there wasn't any major concerns or anything that we had saw and I think that was good to be noted that that uh, that would go into the ownership's application and request knowing that that would be a, an item that the sheriff's in support as well so okay so we have a motion by Scott or no yeah motion by Scott yeah. and a second by Doug any further discussion hearing none all those in favor signify by aye aye Aye. Any opposed? All right. Okay. Ownership changes. Application approved. Okay. Moving on to item number nine. This is discussion and possible action to approve the, the items and the minutes in November 8th, 2021's regular meeting. Move to approve. Motion by Scott. Second. Second by Doug. 
Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Moving on to correspondence. Uh, Nathan? Nathan's, I got the, Nathan sent out an email uh, letter to the Mississippi Valley Workforce Development Board and from the Sheriff's Department okay. concerning what we just voted yeah, on. In support of the video. Mm -hmm. yeah. Scott? I had uh, the exact same uh, as Doug with the COVID and the workforce emails and I didn't have any of them to note. Okay. So I had a... Um, email the same thing that you guys had had on the su supports I had an email from the city administrator of Muscatine um, identifying the action items that we had discussed uh, earlier back in in October in regards to the transfer stations use um, dollars and costs associated with the uh, trimmings and and utilization from the diversion program with the with the county um, and it was basically a list of action items that they were working on, um, identifying what they needed to do. Some of the items that they shared with is that they were going to update their website, which was going to be a big uh, action for them to know that their communications were not being clear and, and consistent across the constituents in the county. Um, they were looking at costs that they were trying to identify and potential of like what we talked about in regards to a uh, is can a county resident get by a sticker is there a potential how we can you know identify what those costs are and then the the last item was that they were still working on is you know how can a county resident still potentially drop off oil and be able to be a, a portion of that um, I replied back just saying yeah that's exactly what we're after and so you know share what other information you need from us and if we need to have any more follow-up or any other meetings, I'm definitely open to that. So uh, I got that email, and so hopefully we'll hear some more feedback on that. I had an email from uh, Jim Thompson from the Iowa Economic Development Association at the state looking at wanting to help upper housing in the downtown district of West Liberty. Um, I connected him with uh, the economic development for We Lead, and they'll be following up on that had an email from Josh Millard, uh, who's the U.S. District Representative for um, Congressman Miller Meeks, and wanting to look at uh, any potential discussions that we may be needing from a, a, you know, Congress or federal level and potential legislation and, and discussion on what other items that we could do. I shared back um, a number of different things from housing to workforce to unemployment to uh, the new clinic that we're looking at. And, in, uh, in Muscatine, um, identifying just a, a couple different things that I thought were important and I'm hoping that we will be able to further have discussions with him to try to get some um, items that I think are needed in our, in our county. Um, <clears throat> on November 12th, I don't know if this would fall under meetings or not, but it was a quarterly update that they have with West Liberty and it's the business economic group and I got a chance to, to meet with their new city uh, mayor, some of the new council members, um, and then they basically talk about the economics and the developments and what's going on in the county. I think it's something that they've started this last year and they meet quarterly. Um, and, and I was able to just identify and update a lot of the things that we were doing in the county. And I don't know if anybody really takes notes, so I don't really call it a meeting, but it's more uh, correspondence, but it does have a lot of uh, different groups um, throughout West Liberty there. Okay. So, any moving on to uh, meetings? Uh, Nathan? I did not have any. Okay. Doug? No, I didn't have any. Scott? I had none either. Okay. On November 10th, I had, um, <coughs> I, I had a drainage district meeting with drainage district 13, but there was somebody actually taking notes, so I think it was more of a meeting. And we had uh, the county attorney, Jim Barry, with us. Um, Nancy Leake from the city 
uh, Jeff Sorensen and myself. Um, we had uh, a couple different two members from the Homeland Security at the state level, um, board supervisor from Louisa County, county engineers from Louisa County, and and myself. And basically, we we discussed a lot of the discussions that. Louisa County is looking at in, in regards. We met right there at the Louisa County Janus District Pump House, and we we had discussions in regard to potential legislations, concerns that we have in regards to um, what the Janus District has and immunity, potentials and risks and concerns as the county is starting to look at a lot of the projects that we're working on moving forward and how um, the, the Homeland Security and this legislation potentially could help, you know, maybe marriage a little bit more of the county and the drainage districts in regards to helping a little more of alignment in the goals, knowing that we are we are really concerned about updating and, and renovating a lot of the, the drainage district pump house. Um, there was an exchange of a lot of emails and hopefully um, there'll be some more uh, upcoming information out of that group. I think it was a very good group discussion and a lot of different members from across the state that were able to meet there. Um, they were touring Louisa County, so I think it was really kind of led by Louisa County and we got pulled in on that meeting. Um, and that's all I have for meetings. Okay, moving on to item number uh, 12. This is uh, items with the administration office. And the first item is discussion and possible action to eliminate a two part-time diversion officer positions and authorize one full-time diversion officer in the position of the Muscatine County Jail. So this, the, get, when you guys want to clean up and talk, could you find, maybe. Another marathon? <laughs> Six miles yesterday, and oh, man. into the wind, so okay. was not. So last week, um, we came over and talked to Nancy about the prospect of eliminating two part-time positions with our jail diversion program and trying to fill that with a full-time position. Um, historically, uh, the jail diversion program was started by Dave White many, many years ago. Um, that program has benefited uh, not just the sheriff's office, but the community as a whole. Uh, for a long time, they, they mowed uh, snow removal. Uh, you guys are familiar with the program, I'm sure. Yeah. So, uh, over the last several months, um, the uh, guy that we had doing diversion has since taken another spot within the county. Um, we tried to fill in that position with two part-timers. Um, that worked for about four weeks, five weeks. Um, both of them have uh, quit working for the county. Um, we talked to Nancy last week or week before um, about the prospect of creating a full-time position uh, rather than filling with a two-part-time. Um, she gave us a, a cost breakdown of what it costs now and what it would cost if we went with a full-time. Um, we've had the positions advertised, the part-time positions advertised for about a month um, and we haven't gotten any interest in those programs. Uh, we are interested in uh, keeping that program alive. Um, we've gotten a lot of uh, questions from the court system wanting to know when we're going to start working with it again, um, what our plan is with it. Um, we do have a number of people uh, that have gone through the court system and have been sentenced to jail diversion, which those people are on hold right now because we don't have anybody to, to essentially run that program. So. Uh, again, we talked to Nancy uh, about this a week or so ago. Um, I don't know, did you send out the I didn't. Breakdown? I didn't, but I, okay. so well, basically I what I did is I took a look at, at the what the cost of a full-time officer um, with benefits would be, and the number I came up with was 63200 Um What we currently have budgeted for the two part-time officers is 74100 so we could easily do, do one full-time position within the funds that we have budgeted. And though that position is paid by 
commiss through from the commissary fund, um, regardless. So, what we did, um, if you guys remember, uh, under Sheriff Ryan, um, we used to do the jail uh, correctional officers the same way. We'd hire part time, and then the full time officers we'd hire on that part time pool. Um, we struggled with that for a lot of years. Um, in my opinion, if you advertise for a part time employee, you get a part time applicant. Um, if you advertise for a full time job with benefits, your applicant pool is substantially better. Um, so that's what we're asking for today. So when they're part time, Nancy, do they get benefits? No. So then we're paying the extra 15, 20 grand per year for benefits? Essentially, yeah. Is that included in your 74000 the 74 is what was budgeted for two part-time people. Okay. Um, what my estimation of what a full-time, one full-time would be was 60, 63 two. So, and that's with all of the benefits. That's afforded, what the benefits included with them. Afforded to all other county okay. employees. We think, we believe it'll be, a tr uh, as a full-time position, it will be an attractive position and we will be able to find someone to fill it who stays with it. Is the, is the pay scale per hour worked relatively the same for part-time and full-time, or is the full-time? It's We have the exact same scale for part-time or full-time okay. for that position. It's attractive of the, of the full-time position and the benefit package, and I understand it completely, and it makes a tremendous amount of sense to me. The hours for the diversion officers are, are like throughout the day? So, uh, under the part-time uh, plan that we were using, uh, we would have them alternate their days off, uh, where we ran that program seven days a week. Um, in talking with Captain McQuarrie, uh, we discussed maybe the option of uh, rotating a day off or days off. So one week you'd have Monday, Tuesday um, off. The next week you'd have Saturday, Sunday. Um, the diversion program historically is busier on the weekends. Um, if you think about it, people that are sentenced through that program or into that program um, normally, or sometimes I guess, have jobs during the week uh, where the only opportunity that they have to complete those diversion hours are on the weekend. Um, so it would be, uh, it would behoove us to run that program through the weekend. Um, to make it a little bit more attractive, uh, we, we talked about alternating those where it ran two weekends a month, um, and then the days off would be during the week. Uh, typical daytime hours, uh, 7 to 3, um, is what it ran before, uh, where the, the folks that were coming in that were assigned to that program uh, come into the jail, they meet with the diversion officer, they get signed in, um, and go out and complete whatever tasks that they have arranged for that day. Mm -hmm. So, if this diversion per program individual isn't there, none of those individuals can work. Correct. And you can't use any of the other county staff to do that if they were gone or take a vacation there or anything like that? Um, it would be very, very difficult. Um, the, the staff that we have has their current assignments uh, that they perform on a daily basis. Trying to task somebody uh, into that position would be uh, a substantial burden to those positions. Any other questions? Nope. Well, I, I support it. I think it's a good decision, as Scott has mentioned as well, too. Um, I'd like to hear more eventually, you know, how your guys' diversion program rolls out, maybe in another six months, how, how it's implementing, how it's working. Sure. Uh, share how many people have gone through, how many hours you guys have gone through. It would be good for us to, to know that. And we've tracked it in years past uh, by man hour. I think that's program. that's the piece that I like to hear more about, you know, if we're saying, hey, we're utilizing taxpayer dollars and I hate to say this, but they're mowing the yard or they're doing the tree clippings or the front, you know, courthouse. And and I think that that's the, that's the type of stuff that I think, you know, sh shows that we're really utilizing that program. And I think that this is kind of a, I, I, I really love the program. You know, I just wish we could somehow expand it knowing that it could have some potential growth. But I know the challenges we've had with COVID these last couple 
in, in years past, we've used it for more than just uh, groundkeeping and maintenance. Um, we've had crews come out to the patrol office before. Um, we ripped out carpet. We painted. Uh, we used them uh, over here when we're moving furniture in offices. We brought them over. Um, so they're uh, kind of a catch-all. Yeah. Um, and like I said, the, I, I don't have that number in front of me. Um, but in years past, we, we track the man hours um, that the county gains um, free of cost, if you will. Yeah. Um, and as a point of clarification, there's no county tax dollars involved in this program at all. It's all funded it's, it's with correct. commissary yeah. dollars, which are with our profit from the things sold at the jail. Yeah. I They've just, even worked at the fairgrounds yeah. and cleaned up and helped. They get, they get used. Um, we had them in Wilton. Okay, so I have I have no issues with that. I think it's great. Well, I'd make a motion to authorize a full time diversion officer and eliminate the two part time officers. All right, we have a motion by Scott. Second. Second by Doug. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none. All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Opposed. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, we'll be seeing you guys. And we'll check back uh, once we get this position filled and run it for a few months. We yeah, it, I think it, we'll another time maybe I'd walk through or hear more about it from you guys. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you guys. Thank you. All right, moving on to item number B. This is action to reappoint to Brad Akers to the Muscatine County Zoning Commission for a five-year term ending November 7th, 2026. I would move to approve. Motion by Scott. Second. Second by Doug. Any discussion? I'd just like to thank Brad for his willingness to serve. Yes, we appreciate that. That is a great program, and we appreciate that, Brad. Okay, all those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed? All right, 4 0. Thank you again, Brad. Item number C. This is action to set a public hearing Monday, December 6, 2021 at 9 a.m. to request for Brett and Brianna Simon to rezone approximately 3.44 acres in the Waspy Township from A1 Agricultural to R1 Residential District. So moved. Second. <laughs> Motion by Nathan. A second by Scott for a public hearing. It's all right. All those in favor, signify by aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Um, any other items? I, I don't have anything else. Okay. Uh, any information from county employees? Just a, a, a brief follow-up on the road vacation yep. proceedings. Uh, Mr. Holiday did come into my office a week after he got his notice and we talked about a little bit, so we intend to work with him on his needs down there. I, I see he wasn't able to be here today. Yeah. And uh, the other thing that the code has kind of changed over the years that really the only one that has any, the property owners get notified and, and anybody's of course welcome to speak. The only one that really has any standing is somebody that has a house that's affected, so that would have been Mr. Holiday. He's really under the code, the only one that really could ask for something. Okay, oh, I see. All right, well, we appreciate that, that sure. information. I didn't know that, thank you. Okay. All right, any other information from county employees? All right, any comments from the public? Okay, hearing none, it is 10.09 and meeting is adjourned.